Hello everybody. This is Rose Alexander. It's, it's a wonderful day and the weather have really changed. Hopefully it'll stick and stay. Y'all know how that goes. This weather is like up and down. But nevertheless, we're still blessed. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. You're doing an awesome job with us, Lord God. Help us to be all that you can be, all that we can be in you. And help us to do all that you've called us to do, Lord God. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please share the video so that others can get uh, the message. Amen. I want to talk to you. You know we've been talking about the anointing. The anointing. Uh, if you have not forgotten it and if you have, I'm going to give you the simple uh, definition of, of the anointing. Let me just read the scripture on it because I, I like how it say it because of the this definition I wanted to give you it'll go along right with this scripture all right we're going to go to Isaiah 10 27 Isaiah 10 27 talking about the anointing and I'm reading from the King James Bible and it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from all thy shoulders and his yoke from all thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of of the anointing. A simple definition, I've heard I, I've heard it been said many times, so but I'll just say it. Uh, the anointing is the yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. The yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. We've been talking about the anointing and, and that's our topic but I want to use for a subject under that topic is anointed, anointed and appointed. Anointed and appointed. God will never appoint you for something if he has not already anointed you for it. So keep in mind what we said, burden removing, uh, yoke destroying power of God. God will never appoint you for something that he hadn't put his, his, his anointing on you to destroy the yoke and remove the burden of whatever the thing is, 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 is uh, facing you. He will never put you in a place where you don't have the strength or the power from him to do it. So, so then we're talking about anointed and appointed. God will appoint you to do things. He, he have a point, appointed us to do many things. He has given us many uh, natural gifts and spiritual gifts. He has given us talents. He has given us uh, many, many things that he has put in our hand to do, to lay hands on the sick, to, uh, to help, to just be a help to someone. He has anointed us to do all of these things. But he will not uh, give you an appointment to do something when he knows you don't, you don't feel like you have your another, you haven't walked it out, or you don't even believe that he will anoint you. But I serve you notice today that if you're born again, God will quicken and make you alive. And before you was in your mother's womb, and while you was in your mother's womb, he has anointed you to do what he's called you to do. Oh, could I say it this way, Sister Tyler is anointed and appointed? He has anointed you to do what he has appointed you to do. 
So you don't want to walk around being afraid to do what God told you to do. And we are. We walk around being afraid of what he told us to do. I've, I've known people to run away from things that they believe God is saying because they don't want to face it. They don't want, they don't want no parts of it. They're afraid of it. They're not used to it. And God understands that you're not used to uh, feeling his anointing on your life. You're not used to seeing in the spirit when a gift of the spirit is operating in your life. But you need to condition yourself to get ready to experience these things because his gifts, his gifts is given to you to help you to do what he called you to do. If the, if the word anointing, since the word anointing means the yoke destroying, burden removing power of God, God has given you power to bind and loose. He's given you power to tread over serpent and scorpion. He gives you all this kind of power, but you don't use it. And there is two, there are two main reasons well, I won't say that main reason. There are two reasons I want to bring out today that could be hindering you from operating under the anointing that God has already called you to or touched you with. We talked about Moses and how God, how Moses was in God's presence and the presence of God rubbed off on him. And we broke it down by saying to rub off means to anoint. So you have to get in his presence, get in God's presence, and let him anoint you. Because in his presence is fullness of joy, but there's a joy unspeakable, full of glory, that's in his presence. And when you spend time in his presence, you will come out with a joy, a kind of joy that says, I want to do what my daddy wants me to do. And so don't be afraid to get into his presence, because you're conditioning yourself to operate under the anointing that's on your life when you start getting into his presence and practicing his pres presence, worshiping him, giving him glory for all he's done and who he is. You want, to, you want to spend time that way so that the anointing can rub off on you, so God can rub off on you, all right? So, so then I want to bring out two Two reasons that I believe that we do not operate in the anointing that God has already uh, covered us with. Sometimes, sometimes think about this. Sometimes you will meet people who tell you, tell, tells you time after time, God has really touched you in that area. But you somewhat know it, but you... Don't feel comfortable walking out on the things that God has told you to do. Now, uh, just for a brief example, before I go into the two, two reasons, a brief example is I told you before, God has spoke to my husband and said, I need for you to tell this person that they are sick and I'm healing them right now. But because he wasn't used to that, he wasn't used to God anointing his ears to hear that. He wasn't used to that. So what he did was he became a little fearful of it. But his fear did not override his desire to be pleasing to God, to do what God tell him to do. And so, so he, he, he did what God said, but it was a hesitation there. It was a fear there. So one of the reasons... We can know that we are anointed to do something, but we don't, we don't fulfill the thing God said because of fear. That's, an, that's one of the reasons. And I believe it could be one of the number one reasons. The number one reason you're afraid because it's, God knows, he already knows that, that you're not used to being governed by somebody you can't see. You, you have made a step and you have became born again 
And so all of a sudden, you start getting this uh, presence on your life or this information or this word of wisdom, this word of knowledge, this uh, God began to uh, cause his, his, uh, himself to be formed in you. And I, I believe that when, when, when God is, Christ is being formed in you, I believe the, the fruit of the Spirit is being formed in you. The love, peace, joy, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, self-control. All those are being formed in you. And he's been formed in you when you develop those, that fruit of the Spirit. And so you have to let, allow God to, 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 to call that joy by praising him in the midst of whatever you're going through. You can't just say, well, I can't be joyful because you don't know what I'm going through. I'm telling you to be joyful because you're going through something. Because I didn't tell you to do it. I'm just, I'm just a messenger that says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith were patient. Now let patient have her perfect work being entire and wanting nothing. So he wants you to count in joy when things come against you. And he would never ask you to count in joy when something come against you, when he know that he lives in you, he know that he lives in you, and he know that he anointed you. So if he said for you to count it joy, then you can count it joy. When you fall into temptation, tests, and trials, and when you began to count joy or praise him in the midst of it, you began to see him show up and manifest himself when, even when you're going through. Because we, we talk about it all the time that when you praise God, he inhabit the praises of his people. He, you, 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 you create a platform for him to come in and dwell with you in the midst of what you're going through. So that is why it's so important that you forget about the fear of it and begin to praise him. The main reason you don't want to walk in the anointing is because it's something different. It's a presence. Sometimes it's a presence that, that you're not used to. And it brings on fear because you're not used to it. But what he's saying to you is practice being in his presence and then when the anointing come upon your life, you won't be so afraid to walk away from the assignment or the appointment that God has set for you to do. So, so then um, to bring it out, fear, fear is one of the reasons that you do not fulfill what God has appointed you to do because you're afraid. What are you afraid of? You're afraid of What's somebody going to think? What are they going to think? Oh, God, what are they going to think? I'm, I'm talking about laying hands on someone. And they, I, you need to not worry about what they're going to think. First of all, if, he, if he's telling you to minister healing to someone, he's trying to bless that person. He's trying to get you to walk in the anointing that he called you to. And here you, here you are worried about what they're going to think, what they're going to say. I'm going to look crazy. I don't want to speak in tongues. I don't want to speak in tongues. And I don't want nobody to get, give the interpretation because it sounds funny. But what are you saying? What are, what are you saying? You're saying, I'm afraid to walk out on what God has already anointed me to do. He has already anointed me to operate in the gift of tongues. And I'm not referring to myself. I'm just ref I'm talking to you. He has already anointed you to, to talk, to, to speak in tongues. And then he already knows that there is an interpreter. And when God gives you that unction to go head on, you're so afraid of what people think. You can't. You got to drop that. He's told you to pay no attention to their faces. 
Don't work because, because listen, listen to this. People are going through so much stuff now. They're going through so much sickness and pain and death. They don't have time for you being fearful of what the very thing that could release them from some of this that they're going through. So while you sitting around thinking, what are they going to think? I'm going to tell you if I'm sick, what I'm going to think is hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that obedient servant. If God is telling you to lay hands on me or, or telling you that, that I have a pain in my body and give me a word of wisdom and word of knowledge, um, I'm going to be saying hallelujah. I'm going to be hallelujah. I'm going to be thanking, thanking the Lord for allowing you to be obedient. But in your mindset, I'm afraid to do it. So the number one thing is you're so afraid of being different until you just don't do what you was anointed and appointed to do. And I want to say to you that God did not give you the spirit of fear. He's giving you love and power and a sound mind. And I want to speak to that sound mind. The Lord will cause his thoughts to line up with your will and you'll have good success. You need to declare those things. Say, Lord, cause my thoughts to line up with your will. And I thank you that I have good success. You want to do a little bit more with your mind? Because the imagination do run wild. You need to tell the Lord, Father, I cast down imagination and any high thing that exalts itself against your knowledge. And I bring into captivity those things that are pleasing to you, Lord God. And I think on these things. Tell them that. Say, so I think on the things that are good and perfect and honest and lovely and just and of a good report. For Father, you said that is if there be any praise for me to think on these things. But Father, just tell him. Say, say, Father, I need for you to help me to think on the things that are good and perfect and honest and lovely and just and of a good report. So don't be afraid is what I'm saying. Stop being afraid. Stop being so fearful you walk away from the things that God has appointed you to and the assignment that God has given you. You're walking away from them, and you are the very person they need. I'm talking to someone in particular now. That person waiting on you, and you're sitting there being afraid, wondering what they're going to think. I told you, they're going to think, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for rescuing me. So stop being afraid simply by Getting into the mirror like I did. I was a person that was bound by fear. I would get, into, get in the mirror and say, For God have not given me the spirit of fear. Father, you have given me love and power and a sound mind. Help me, God. Help me, Lord. You got to ask him. Because the enemy is going to always throw fear there. No matter what you're doing, the enemy, the devil is going to put fear there. False evidence appearing real. Many things that the devil is saying is not real. Now he'll tell you, he'll tell you some things that you know is true, but he, he had a, he have a motive for telling you that. So he's not lying about that. He's not lying about that. But what I'm saying is, he lies to tell you, to make you fearful of stepping out on what God have called you and appointed you to do. That's just the, one of the reasons. Uh, there, was a, there was a time the Lord spoke to me uh, about uh, radio. I, was too, I'm, I don't want to do that. But why? Why would not I want to do what God tell me to do? And I'm a way of convincing you that this is the worst thing you could do. So he says, radio, he says, 
even right here on YouTube and Facebook, there was a certain fear. Now it's not. But I'm just saying initially when, when God starts speaking those things of getting into the media and taking advantage of the media to spread the word because he says greater work shall we do because he spread the word all over. He said greater works shall we do because we have media. We have, we have Facebook. We have YouTube. We, there was no Facebook and YouTube back in the Bible days, so to speak. We know these are the Bible days, but back then there was no YouTube. There was no Facebook. But he says, he says, greater work shall we do because he's going to the Father and he's sending us another comforter. So we need to take advantage of that and walk in the anointing that God has called us to and stop being fearful. The only way you can stop being fearful is ask the Lord to help you. Use the word to get rid of the fear. Put, put God's word in and fear got to go. So, so he says, Television, he says radio, to, 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 quick, to make it quick, he says for me to pray for the sick. He says, pray for bereaved families, those that have lost children. Command that spirit of grief to lose its hope. He said to do this. But fear would say, what do you, you're not, you're not going to be able to do that. And guess what I'll say? Fear, I know I'm not able to do it. And I am not doing it. I am not delivering nobody from nothing. I am not healing nobody. I am not setting anybody free. I'm only laying hands on the sick. I'm only ministering to the hearts of the bereaved and God give the increase. So maybe, just maybe, if you take it off of the fact that you think you got to make it happen. No, I don't have to make anything happen. The only thing I have to do is be obedient and God give the increase. So let God deal with you about that. That you just let him, you do what you do and let him do what he's, he's supposed said he would do. Uh, the, we're going to, I got a few minutes. Um, the next thing I want to bring out is I noticed that we as Christians and most of us, let me say this, most of us have not allowed Jesus to be Lord of our life. He has, we have not allowed Jesus to be Lord. Now we accept him as Lord and Savior. When we say, Lord, I believe in, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you died and you raised and God raised you from the dead, Father, and I thank you right now that I'm saved. You receive him as Lord and Savior. But you don't let him be Savior. I mean, you don't let him be Lord. He's Savior because he quickened and make you alive when you accept him into your heart. When you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and you ask him to come in, he quickened and make you alive. But you have not, you have not uh, uh, yield yourself to be obedient to him, making him Lord. Look, look let's listen at this. To allow God to be Lord. First, I want to just give you what a Lord, the, the word Lord. Lord is a person having power and authority over others. Simple, simple, simple. I said Lord to be Lord over somebody. You have authority and power over them. You may not be familiar with hearing it from the point of view of that's who Jesus have authority and control over your life. But think about it. 
the word Lord. Before I tell you what kind of Lord I'm talking about right here, you, you'll know by, by my definition. A, a, um, a high-ranking crime boss controls a sizable network of people involved in illegal drug trade. What is that? A drug lord. What is that drug law? A drug law, right back to the definition, a person having power and authority over others. You know those drug lords have authority and power over the little, the little guys. You tell them wh where to take it. You tell them where to sell it. You sit back and you watch them do it. And you give them orders and you tell them what to do. So you lord over the drug, the drug world. Your your station, your your location, your domain, your whatever you call it, your area, you're the Lord over that drug area. So a drug lord, a drug lord, a drug a kingpin uh, is a high ranking ranking crime boss who controls a sizable network of people involving illegal drugs. Okay, let us see. What about, what about someone over authority of property and real estate? What do you call him? A landlord. He's over it. He control it. He said who go in, who come out. Who to rent it out. Who to kick out. Y'all hear me? And so what I'm saying, he's, he's, taking, he's taking a rule and reign over that. So then... Your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we should make him Lord over our life. Many of us have made him Savior. And you're happy about the fact that you have allowed him into your heart and you've been quickened and made alive. And if you leave here today, you'll, you will be with him. But you're not leaving here today. You need to make him Lord, or maybe I should say, allow him to be Lord over your life. Let us go to uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 19 and 20. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have received from God. You are not your own. Oh my God. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glory God in your body. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want, we don't want to glory God in our body. We don't mind being saved. So now you can't walk in the anointing in the appointed assignment God has for your life because you don't want to make him, you don't want to be, you don't want to be ruled and reigned by him. You don't want to, you just want to be saved and you don't want him to tell you what to do and you don't want nobody else to tell you what to do. You don't want nobody to tell you where you wrong it. You don't want nobody to tell you where you sinning it. You don't want, that's a sin. And you want to jump out and say, you, you judging me. No, I'm not judging you. I told you once that I'm not judging you when I tell you that the Bible said that you should flee fornication, you should flee adultery, all those things you should flee and lying. Oh, don't leave lying out and don't leave backbiting and, and, and being dishonest with each other. All of those are included in the things that he requests that you do. And when you're led by that, you're letting him be Lord of your life. But no, you want to stay, you want to stay in the background of Christianity. You want to just be saved. And you don't care nothing about how you treat me. You want to say that I love the Lord. But you don't care how you treat your brothers and your sisters, your white brothers and your white sisters. I better break it down. You don't care how you treat other mankind. So then, how is it that you have
have made him Lord over your life when you are born again, but yet you won't do what he tells you to do. He's anointed you to love everybody. He's appointed you to love everybody, but you, you, don't, you choose to not do it. You let the, your surrounding, you let the curves of the world dictate to you where you know that they ain't no good. I'm not going to love them. I'm not going to even let them in my world. Is this your world? And I understand. I understand everybody don't want mess in their circle. I understand that. But most of the time, that is not what you're talking about. You got a set color that you want to be around. And you don't want to have anything to do with the whites. Oh, I don't deal with blacks. I don't deal with Chinese. I don't deal with this. God anointed you to love everybody. He anointed you to be kind to everybody. He anointed you to do that. Now, now you, you're saying, now I'm talking to the, I'm talking to the born again Christian. The born again Christian, there's a, God has quickened you and made you alive and he's anointed you to do what he said you could do. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. So he's anointed you for some things. Now you won't do them because you don't want him to be Lord of your life. You don't want it. Now, now y'all, you know I'm not picking. You know I'm telling you the truth. The reason you have not, you have not wanted to do uh, the appointment or the assignment God has on your life because you don't want him controlling you. You don't want him being Lord, uh, reigning over your life. So you don't want to be him to be Lord and you don't act like he's Lord. The, uh, the contemporary English version says, says this about a first Corinthians six 20. It says, God paid a great price for you. So use your body to honor him. That is not just referring to uh, sexual sin. That's referring to your hand, your feet. Go the way he tell you to go. Speak what he tell you to speak. Lay hands on those he tell you to lay hands on. But you don't want, I'm not going, I just, I just love the Lord. Yeah. If you love me, you'll keep my commandment. I love the Lord with all my heart, and I, I just, you know, I'm just reserved. No, you're not. No, you're not reserved. You, you're walking in fear. You're walking in fear, and you don't want to be governed by what God is telling you to do. You just want to be saved, but you don't want God to tell you nothing. And the reason you don't want God to tell I'm closing out, and then I'm, I'm going to pick this up next week, but I'm going to tell you the reason why. The reason why you don't want God to tell you nothing. Because you want to continue to do you. I'm going to do me. When you, when you are born again Christian, you've been quickening your spirit to make you spiritual alive. You shouldn't have the attitude of I just want to do me. Now next week we're going to talk about some of the ways you choose to do you that keep you from walking in the anointing of God that keep you away from going, going uh, into the area God have anointed you to. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Your word is forever settled in heaven. It will not go out and come back void. You are standing on your word, watching it come to pass. And I will give you glory for it. We give you honor and we give you praise. In your son Jesus' name, amen and amen.